Hello everybody, I'm here with another book review, and this one is for, oops, wrong side, uh, Ballas by Philip K. Dick. Um, as you can tell, I made my own little crappy, um, subpar kind of cover that I made literally in like a few minutes, just because I didn't actually read the book, and I don't have the physical copy of the book, but I listened to it on Audible, which I've been doing a lot, trying to do, um, in order to kind of gain as many, you know, read as many books as I possibly can, you know, I'm trying to... Um, you know, probably, probably not the scale that I read last year, um, but, you know, trying in keeping with that habit, I'm trying to actually, I'll try to listen to an audible book while reading a book, obviously not the same time, you know, that's like humanly impossible. I'm sure somebody could do it, but, you know, um, I, yeah, Phallus by Philip K. Dick, um, I listened to that and it was, uh, yeah, it was a very great experience. Um, the only other book by his I've actually read before that was, um, do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which is a really great, um, obviously Blade Runner is based off of that, um, and yeah, it was, um, basically, uh, the novel's about, um, it's, uh, about this character named Horse Lover Fat, and he is, um, very, very much similar to, um, Philip A. Dick himself, in fact, there's some schizophrenic type, um, the very kind of almost characterization of that kind of schizoid temperament actually uh, something that kind of uh, Dick um, uh, flirted with himself in real life. To what degree, I'm not entirely sure. Some people wrote him off as crazy. I think he was a really, you know, astoundingly intelligent person. Uh, definitely had a very kind of mystical side to him too, as which you'll see in this book, which is said to have been more of his emotional ones. Uh, Whereas, kind of his older ones, like, you know, Drew Android's Dream of Electric Sheep is a good example, uh, kind of more calculating and, and disp dispassionate. But I think that was, like, necessary for the story, so. But yeah, I think in this, you see uh, Horse Lover Fat actually means, uh, you know, Philip in Latin. I think the name, the root Latin origin, I think means horse, and I think, so Horse Lover Fat, and I think one of those two, I think Dick means maybe fat. But I'm probably mixing it up. But yeah, one of those means horse lover, and then his last name in real life means fat. So, um, yeah, it's just like an interesting way of how he kind of imbued himself in his own novel without being kind of overly kind of the obvious self-assertion auteur type of thing. And yeah, basically he, the main character, this character, and it's actually not told from his point of view, it's told from another character, which is basically, I guess it's, it's revealed later, spoilers, uh, that they're the same person. Um, <laughs> Horse Lover Fat and, and the narrator. The narrator basically, I think, it does identify explicitly, I think, or implicitly, as basically Philip K. Dick himself saying that, hey, here, I'm the author of The Man in the High Castle, here, I'm Philip K. Dick, science fiction author. And, um, yeah, and he basically, Horse Lover Fat, receives this what's called a valis, which is stands for vast active intelligence sing i did write it down um it is a bit like it's, yeah valis um vast active living intelligence system so yeah it's basically that acronym um basically he receives this ball of light that comes to him and he think and he's basically given this uh kind of revelation and he calls it on the line of basically theophany and which is basically god revealing themselves basically a, a deity kind of revealing oneself themselves to you and yeah he thinks this is like very much there's like a lot of like gnostic themes in this like a lot of you know the quotes by valentinian and he talks a lot about plato and you know the idea that there's like a this is like the second you know basically a fabrication world and you know he talks a lot about which kind of tickled my feather you know because i actually had to try to go at reading the Nag Hammadi translations, at least the recent ones, and yeah, it was definitely very far beyond <laughs> quite my, I feel like I'd, I'd need to definitely, that uh, warrants more um, more digesting or some, some type of uh, fomentation, I guess, be it through lectures or whatnot, but I think I need an expert to guide me through that, but yeah definitely very I am very interested in those topics as well so that kind of tickled my feather but I can understand people saying that maybe it delved a little bit too into these very heady very um metaphysical themes 
talking about Plato, talking about, you know, Democritus and, you know, the different, you know, you know like the, the nature of the world and, you know, the, you know the Thales and, uh, you know, all these different philosophers and uh, uh, different, also different um, kind of religious figures too, like Valentinius or, um, or uh, um, you know, the, who kind of, I think, was an early Gnostic, I think, priest, I think, or like a religious religious figure and like origin or Tertullian or you know all these uh, kind of you might be a little bit delving too much into that and I think by his own admission uh, Dick I think wanted to distance himself from the science fiction genre because he felt like it was too a lot there are a lot of hack writers out there who kind of use the genre as pretty much just like endless world building like oh like Something about, you know, like where it's like, oh, our horizons are so far, but like at the same time, he said this in a talk, something to this effect that there, it doesn't really, science fiction kind of gives people a leash to speculate, but not to actually figure anything out, like to say anything meaningful. So it's like the sub, it's mostly all style and no substance, pretty much as I think was what he was getting at. So I kind of see, because you think, you see all these different people, L. Ron Harvard comes to mind. I'm actually admittedly not a big science fiction reader, and I'm more into, uh, you know, like, probably what you can gl glean from these past, you know, basically all the videos I've posted so far is mostly just kind of more auteur magic realism, kind of arcane things, and uh, more philosophical fiction, I guess, Bildungsroman, and yeah, that's probably my area, but I'm also very open-minded, and I'd like to read more. I've read uh, Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, which I'd like to get around to reviewing sometime. But I feel like I want to, my foray into this should be Philip K. Dick, because he is, I've just heard so many good things about him. Because if you don't really agree with him, that, um, and I'm just going to check to see if it's it doesn't tell me, it's not. but um, it's kind of the, um, what I find most compelling about the novel is that he says that Horse Over Fat basically is is with his friends and he has three three or four different friends and one of them is kind of like I'm assuming is a little bit more street smart I guess whereas and, and basically Horse Lover Fat has these uh, suicide att attempts where he um, without giving too much of the book away um, where he basically um, falls in love with this you know suicidal girl and she ends up killing herself and then following that that kind of is where the novel sets off um, in media res kind of and uh, he's he's very much on the brink of kind of like flirting with suicide and and yeah it's very he's in a very dark place and this beam of light that he sees this Vallis, you know uh, this this random transmission of, in, of intelligence that he gets he thinks is like very potent and very and he's in the midst of actually penning his own uh, if, uh, his his own exegesis um, that you know where he writes uh, this cosmology of the world and history of the stars and all that and you know and he, he's it's very detailed and very you know he's going super deep into this and basically he kind of throughout the novel we get because we get kind of an intimate look because basically the narrator is Philip Dick himself um, into kind of more the more chaotic side so you have these two kind of um, Again, I keep wanting to say schizophrenic, but I feel like that's kind of mislabeling or kind of like jumping to conclusions. But no, it's like a very kind of uh, di dichotomous is a good word. Like it's very one side of Philip K. Dick's character um, is very frenetic and, and on the verge of suicide, and, and you know, and is thinking and seeing patterns and everything, and like you know, like the, the world and you know, Platonic order and Platonic forms, and that the fact that this is a this world is a lie, and that y'all to both is the a god of illusions who um, is trying to separate us from Plur Pluroma, which is the like heavenly realm. And the Archons, you know, there's no such thing as just angels and devils. There's actually rankings of order of different, as you know, the Gnostic preachers said, you know, like they, the Gnostic sects, like the uh, um, Nasanis, I think, you know, like they said something to the effect that, you know, like the, that there are that angels that there's no black and white thing to angels and devils and like that's why the book of judas is like so uh enticing because it it puts this it flips the typical narrative of judas was just the bad guy 
on its head and shows Judas, I think, going throughout um, throughout hell and through, you know, in the afterlife, we kind of see him. And at some point, Jesus tells Judas, like, you, like, get away from me, you daemon, I think. And that's, like, r roughly translated because I think it was, like, from the third century, I think, in Thoth Greek. And kind of, like, um, what what's the word? Um, theosophic, no, it's... Um, the, the Temple of Thoth, basically, to the god um, Thrice Greatest Hermes. Yeah, Hermes Trismegistus, or tr Trismegistus, depending on who is pronouncing it. Who is basically this not not possibly real, but possibly uh, more of a god, more of a... Because back then, what, what happened was, this is just from what I kind of garnered from, from the few lectures that I've listened to, but it's pretty much, you know, from... Compar comparative comparative religion says that there's a lot a big theme is that people who are part of a, uh, a religion tend to uh, identify as gods themselves or you know like ten they tend to so like basically thrice greatest Hermes was you know speculated to have not existed but all at the same time is so vaguely real that he might as well have been real in some sense so it's kind of it's a very interesting thing and yeah this it's you hear there's also some ma vague parallels to alchemy in this as well which i love and yeah basically he um uh you know horse lover fat tries to get out of his own head and you know he's trying not to make the same mistake twice right like he's trying not to get stuck in the muddle muddled depressing world of kind of you know, suicide attempts and, and, you know, and being secluded in this room. At a, like, and he talks a lot about, a lot of this book takes place at, like, a mental ward, basically, where, uh, an asylum where he's trying to, you know, and he, he meets all sorts of different characters. One of them, he's, like, uh, you know, very traditional, traditional, you know, kind of a fundamentalist, like, oh, look, this Gnostic stuff you're talking about is nonsense. There's only the one true word of God, and that's it. And then he's like, but no, this is a false world created by abstract, you know, uh, y'all do both, and we're all living a lie, and, like, this isn't reality, and, like, you know, uh, the, the one true, like, pleroma, or spirit, like, the world of spirits is, like, coming for us, and trying to communicate with us, and there's, like, only slight little messages that kind of get conveyed, just light little beams of light, like Valis, that get conveyed to us, sometimes we catch it, sometimes we miss it, and that's what's beautiful about it, because it's kind of a philosophical dissertation, too, because you see this a lot in Russian novels, for example, off the top of my head, because I've read probably more Russian novels than I can count. Um, but the, the, you see this polyphonic duet, duet tet, or, you know, like, two at play or whatever, with different characters where they kind of represent different philosophies. And this is kind of what I saw in here, is, like, you see some who are very very staunchly religious and then you see some who are more like philip k dick who is i believe episcopalian and from reading his oh yeah that's another really great thing how to build a universe that doesn't fall apart two days later is a really really great it's one of my favorite essays at all time and not just because Richard link link later references it at the end of waking life uh although that's what inspired me or prompted me to reading it but yes um it's also great on its own terms um and because he really does question that, that question, the everything at face value, where Philip K. Dick himself also had experiences where his life became to align very eerily with the Book of Acts. So he end, ended up attending a church, I think, in middle age, and his he told his wife about it, and um, and God bless his wife, for, um, because it seems like on from the outside, like he had like a, you know, like you'd think his kind of like his flirtations with very very potent t topics and stuff and mysticism you would have thought like maybe um there would like his wife would have like left him or something and but his wife was very very faithful from what i know so that's good good on him good on them and yeah like so he basically sees this these uh parallel uh you know narratives matching up where his like, he goes out, and his life is, like, lining up with the Book of Acts so much. Like, he's, like, he, like, we're basically, like, on the road to, I think, Canaan, I think. Basically, I think Peter is in the Book of Acts. It's like, so, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm hazy on biblical knowledge, but, um, been meaning to get more into reading, more studying, more biblical texts and stuff, but, uh, that's for a later date. But today, um, basically, 
yeah, he's he starts seeing these things happening, and Philip K. Dick is in real life. See, like something that lines up with that happens in one of the chapters where uh, there's a man from Cain, I think, who's like you know a dark skinned man that needs help, and that they help, and they pick up on the road, and they ended up having to do that with like they find like a dark skinned man in within California somewhere, Venice Beach, I think, or I'm not sure where he's from, but somewhere in California where he lives, like he found like somebody who was on the land to like a very it, it added up so weirdly. Read it for yourself, but I'm I'm botching the whole thing. But yeah, it's like it's just so it's I guess it begs the question like what happens when you're given that like you're given you're like oh crap like you, know, you could call it synchronicity you could call it some Jungian collective unconscious um some instantation instantiation of uh I don't know the 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 divine I guess but whatever it is it's like for him that was like changed everything and he was like he started like questioning things and started new and that's like it, but this begs the question for me on a personal note is like if it, it's it's maybe the question might be posed as why excuse me why would god choose a pre-elected a tiny little minority and show them like oh i'll give you little clues but not everybody else. Like, what happens to the rest of them? Which is kind of like a Calvinist type of thing. Like, why does God, pre you know, elect you know, the whole tulip thing where it's like, God only elects the part, you know, the, uh, everybody else, there's like total depravity, everybody else, you know. I forget, you know, what exactly they believe. But no, it's like that, and I just don't get it. And I guess it's like, it, maybe Philip K. Dick didn't know either. Maybe he's just like, I don't know, I'm just going through this, and there's these little things of light with the fact that for him it was so real is what kind of is like oh like this is like beyond science fiction and yes i get there's like a there's like he himself in the book because i was saying this kind of similarity also kind of like takes a step back and says maybe some of it's not all that interconnected maybe everything is kind of like not like this preordained perfect polytonic form and everything's a lie and everything's a narrative and and they were showing these little bits and these glimpses but ultimately you know where this world is an illusion and we should abstain from sin and vice and you know basically you know <laughs> it's just and basically kind of like you know it's like an open herian type of asceticism kind of pursue that and yeah it's like that he starts questioning that at some point in the novel, I think. Um, but yeah, basically he starts like calling it into question and saying like, maybe it's not that dramatic. Maybe there's actually something like more, maybe the truth is le less um, arcane and crazy than we think. So yeah, that is Philip K. Dick's Vallis. I'm probably leaving something out. But uh, on that note, for the near future, I'd like to get into um, doing different multimedia things. Like, I'd like to do, like, a little talk on, like, just um, music and talk about, like, maybe favorite albums or whatnot. Um, but that and maybe, like, just, like, podcast recommendations or certain things that I'd like to just kind of tell other people because I feel like a lot of this type of stuff just, just comes from references that I've had. And in that sense, my totally unoriginal person no, i'm just kidding um but yeah like i i do take a lot of references from people who say oh you should watch this podcast or you know like something that ends up in my you know queue on youtube for the algorithms works pretty well f so far so um once you start curating like something going once you get some feedback loop i guess going like you kind of you're going to get like a good retargeted information that actually is conducive to you so most of the time, <laughs> other times you just get awful, you know, TikTok videos and stuff, and you're just like, how the heck did I get this? But no, um, let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, that will be it. Uh, thank you for watching.